Landmarks are detailed locations that represent a place for adventuring heroes in the One Ring to explore. Landmarks are, for the most part, some form of ancient ruin, a natural feature of the land, like a distinct mountain, river, maybe a cave, or even a recently active mine. Some could even be an empty field that was once the sign of a long-ago battle that pitted the forces of good against the forces of evil, where the presence and sense of death and the shadow still taints the land. Landmarks give that sandbox feel to the One Ring, allowing the Lore Master to present specific locations to a company of heroes, and for them to choose where they want to go to explore, to find hidden treasures, or throw to an ever-growing evil that threatens the land and the free peoples that live nearby. Landmarks are not your traditionally written adventure scenarios that you may see in other games like Dungeons & Dragons, OSR-created ones, DCC, or otherwise. Rather, Landmarks are presented and written in a way that gives you just enough information as the lore master to present what it looks like, what can be found, and what can be encountered within it. Playing a landmark can have multiple ways of being played out, rather than a linear path to completion, and can have multiple outcomes and impacts to the overarching campaign that you as the lore master is running or playing. Also, individual landmarks generally do not flow back to back with others, although that doesn't always have to be the case. Rather, landmarks are self-contained scenarios that lore masters, if they wish, can thread their and their players' stories, allowing for a unique adventuring experience that will differ with any other playgroup that's playing the One Ring. Let's take a quick look at how landmarks are structured and how you as the lore master can create your own using the tools and format presented and starting on page 221 of the core rulebook. Let's take a look at the name. When thinking of the name of the landmark you are creating, think first about the area of a Riador or else while in Middle-earth you're thinking of placing your scenario. Think about the history of the area, current happenings around, or even future events that possibly could happen that once your players reach this landmark could impact these future events. The core rulebook and further official supplements provide you with just enough Middle-earth history to get you thinking and starting and tying some of this together for your landmark. If you are like me, and have used this game as a bridge to learning the extensive lore of Middle-earth from Tolkien's many books, there's nothing stopping you from pulling in the various areas and points of interest and adding it to your game. Either way, the name should reflect the landmark in some way, and as suggested, could just be something that local superstition or legend has given name to it. Now, I found that sometimes you have to create the landmark first and then get back to the name when something pops into your head afterwards. Play with it. Let your thoughts simmer on the back burner. Something will come to you eventually. Rumors. As you've probably already seen in the example landmark Star of the Mist in the core rulebook and in the various supplements, there are two entries for rumors. These rumors are given to the players by the lore master at an appropriate time within gameplay, or specifically with the use of the Gather Rumors undertaking during the company's fellowship phase. The first rumor is generally non-specific information that could be true, or even false, sprinkled in with various legends and stories told by locals, old tales from retired adventurers, or parents to frighten their children and stop them from going outside at night causing mischief. Just enough true, or in fact false, information should be presented here to hook the players into learning more about the landmark and want to gather more information, or even just go and explore the landmark anyway. The second rumor, titled Old Lore, is further deeper information about the landmark found as they do further research in an old library, like Elrond's in Rivendale, tomes found in the studies of the Grey Havens, or through counsel with a patron, lore master, or even a cantankerous, wizened old man living in an estate just outside of town. Unlike the rumor above, the information is generally true, but could also be vague or very old knowledge, leaving the players to question if the information is useful or just a curiosity. There's usually something in there, however, that lends to what potentially could be found there, whether it be lost treasure or some foul and nameless creature who calls the landmark home. The Background the background provides the bulk of the information required to run the landmark during an adventuring phase and gives a quick overview of what's found in the map section of the landmark. Any specific detail is presented there instead of here. 
As lore master, think about how you want the general look and feel to be presented so that any other lore master who has this landmark gets enough of the information to feel they want to run it for their game. It also parses out some more information that they could drop for their players as they do their research and gather more information before exploring the landmark, like if they roll more than one success icon on a lore roll. Specific directions of how the players are to get there are not provided, and what is given should be very general, something like a three days walk east of the Brandywine, meaning the landmark could be anywhere between Fornos of the north and south towards the sea. Very vague indeed. Players may question how they would find such a place, and the lore master would then suggest they need to explore the map, or find more information about the specific location, and then set out to explore, using the journey rules to do so. Some landmarks may be generally known, like Weathertop, the White Towers, or in this case the Withywindle, while others are obscure enough not to be general knowledge to anyone. When creating your landmark, thinking about some specific events that would happen either on the journey to the landmark or just before the players reach it, providing some unique event that the players have to roleplay through. Could be anything. Let your imagination wander. If you are creating a landmark and it's big enough to warrant its own journey events table because all in all it's days wide, make a specific journey events table itself, identifying landmark specific events to bring to life. Of course, the only caveat is that it should just be limited to the landmark itself and not to be used outside during normal journeys. For example, in my Withy Window landmark, I created a specific journeys events table to highlight the unique nature of the landmark, in this case, the Withy Window Valley, itself taking days to navigate from the headwaters to the east and the river's mouth to the west. The map. Like any good adventure, a map is a must for a landmark. Not only does it help you in setting and writing the details of the landmark, but it's something to visually trigger the imagination of your players as they explore it. Now, we're all not cartographers or illustrators, so be kind to yourself and do what you can. Even a rough sketch is enough to that identifies key areas to explore. Your players will appreciate the effort, and in the end, their visualization of the landmark will come out with just a few prompts from your map and your written descriptions. Here you can see I drew a crude map of the Withy Window with some notable features and identified key areas that are fleshed out as areas for your players to encounter and explore. I'll link the reference book that I used to help draw this out, that being Jared Blando's How to Draw Fantasy and RPG Maps, and highly recommend you get this if you're interested in drawing your own fantasy maps. Locations. Once you've penciled down a rough map for yourself, think about the locations you want to place in your landmark for your players to explore. Ask yourself some questions. What does it comprise of? Is it a room? Is it big or small? Is it made of stone or wood? Ruined or relatively intact? Is it a tree outside in a withered grove? Is it the side of a cliff, a tall, sheer, smooth surface of granite? Of course, the sky is the limit here, and sit back and let your imagination flow. Use examples from other landmarks or other media such as books, movies, or interesting landmarks from our world itself. Once you come up with the image in your mind of what the landmark could be, start writing down the details of each location, how they connect to each other within the landmark, what's in or special about it, including any treasure and or an encounter with an adversary or even just an NPC, notable or otherwise. If it is an NPC, make sure to describe in detail how the NPC looks like, such as distinctive features, why they're there in the first place, and how they generally would first interact with the players. Use the example of how NPCs are presented in the core rulebook or supplements, usually just a paragraph or two of the backstory, listed distinctive features, occupation, if any, and the name. Some NPCs or adversaries may be tied later to the schemes and trouble section of the landmark presentation, which we'll cover shortly. There's no limit to the amount of locations to be presented in any landmark scenario. However, keep in mind that generally a landmark should be explored in full in one or two playing sessions, but no more than one entire adventuring phase. That's not saying it could not take longer, as depending on the play of the player heroes and what outcomes there are from their actions and die rolls could mean a retreat to a safe location, or even return due to some new events that happen later in your campaign, or worse, total party death. 
It's a living world after all, so consider what could happen to a landmark if the players had explored it early in the campaign, but then returned many years later. Have things changed since they last explored it, or has it stayed the same? Schemes and Trouble Lastly, the landmark usually gives you some continuing threads to pull on as lore master, all dependent, of course, on the actions of the player heroes as they explore the landmark and interact with any of the lore master adversaries or NPCs that are found there. When creating a landmark, consider what factors can limit the player's ability to explore the site. Is the landmark tied to a larger picture or plans of a recurring enemy of the player heroes? Does the actions of the player heroes, whether succeeding or failing to fully explore the landmark, cause some chain of events to come to pass that impacts the world at large? Whatever it is, write those what-ifs in this section. As with the rest of the landmark, keep it concise and with the intent of prompting a lore master of how to use them. As always, one doesn't have to use any of the schemes in trouble, they're just there as a general suggestion of what you can do with it. When writing and presenting a landmark, remember to forego the detailed explanation to inform a lore master on how to run the game. It's assumed that the lore master will reference the core rulebook to adjudicate the play accordingly. For example, the landmark should not give detailed description of the rules of the journey, skill endeavors, or any other rule as referenced in the core rulebook. Once you have the ideas down on paper, go back and review the information. Start to edit and remove any writing that doesn't really need to be there, either because it's addressed in the core rulebook, or you've addressed it elsewhere in the landmark. Information should be as concise to fit the entire landmark into five to six pages. Once you've done creating the landmark and feel that it's ready for an adventure, take it on a solo run using the Strider Mode rules to flesh out any areas you feel that need some adjusting. I find Strider Mode really helps to straighten out any kinks in the landmark. Of course, nothing is ever perfect, so always keep that in mind, and if you're running the landmark, be forgiving to yourself and adjust on the fly. Your players probably won't realize the difference anyway, as they're generally excited just to be playing the game and rolling the dice with you. I hope you have found this helpful as a lore master in creating and writing your own landmarks. I found the process thoroughly enjoyable, and it's helped me more dig and delve ever the more into the works and lore of Middle Earth. As always, thank you for watching this video, and if you would like to help support and make this channel grow, spread the word about this wonderful game, like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. I'm Ryan of the North, and thank you for watching.